No, you're not. Stop it. Well, maybe a little bit. No. Oh. What? So, does anyone have questions from... I just answered a few questions from uh, chapter one, chapter two, some questions about homework grading. Does anyone have... Has anybody gotten further along with chapter one, chapter two? Yeah, I have a question for chapter two. Yes. Can you show us how to graph an absolute value inequality? Oh, hell yeah. Function, please. Certainly. What? I thought, oh, there it is. Okay. I had the book here somewhere. Uh, uh, 68 for chapter two. Uh, 58? 68. 60. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, yummy. Now, so uh, let me let me do this. I'll start from the basics. If you hit any function and you're not sure how to graph it, what do you do? What's the most basic way? Here, let me do this. What's the most basic way to graph any function if you're not sure what the graph looks like? You like put it Plug in, in numbers? Yeah, make a little table, right? Here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to spotlight myself. Yeah. All right. And then, shoop. And then, sh oh, shit. Shoop. All right. Um, so what you could do, so if I had, for example, So you can start uh, making a little table of values. So I like to put in some negatives, some positives. I'm gonna kind of force us to do something. <laughs> some of you guys should be able to see why I wanna go this. So when you put a negative one in, what do you get out? Five. Five, that's right. Why is my AC so loud? God, just shut up. Uh, when you put a zero in, you're gonna get four, when you put a one in, you're gonna get absolute value negative three is three, you put a two in, you get absolute value negative two is two, you put a three in, you get one, you put a four in, you get zero, but then when you put a, oh, Jeff, what is, I love it, that's good, I need, mm. all right, so if you put a five in, five minus four is one, absolute value one, and now, of course, what what's important about right here? It starts going back up. Yes. So, at this stage of the game, I'm hoping your 110 teacher or wherever you came from, you know the basic look of some graphs. You should know what a squared looks like, what a cube looks like, what a, what a radical equation looks like, what an absolute value equation looks like. It's going to have some point. So, it's going to look like a V. And really, so the most important place to find is that turning point. And it makes sense the turning point is around 4 because that's what makes the zero. So on one side it's negative, on the other side it's positive, and the absolute value makes it turn. Let me stop for a minute. Is everybody semi with me? At least, uh, who was it that asked me this question? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay. So then this would just, and then you just plot the points, but what's really important is at four, it's zero, and then it goes uh, up in both directions from there. So there's your three, one, and so forth. We are. I like it. I have a question. Yes. What if there's a negative outside of the of the absolute value? So watch this. So what if I have a function that is the negative? Oh, you can do it, Jeff. There you go, buddy. Sort of. All right. There it is. What would that do to this picture? I'm Flip hopefully it. thinking it goes downward. Yeah, so what it does is, it's kind of cool. It takes all the outputs. There's all the old outputs, right? And it makes every output become the opposite of what it was. So zero is still at zero, but now for an output of one, it's an output of negative one. And so forth. So then you get it, it's a reflection around the x-axis. I 
I understand how you do that, but I don't know how to graph an absolute value function that has an any uh, has an inequality. All right. So the rest of the problem says, let me take this away. So this isn't the way they give it to you, right? They say graph the absolute value and graph the constant. So let me say, what if this was less than or equal to three? So this is here. How do I graph three? You would shift it over three? No, this is separate. So they're saying, so for example, do you guys know if you graph this line and you graph this line, you will find that where they meet is the answer to this. Is that, is that cool? Did you guys, you guys know that? Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's all we're doing. If you graph this function, done, and you graph this function, and what is y equals three looks like? What does it look like? It would just look like a horizontal line at y three. I like it. So how, and then you can tell the answer to this equation, where is this function below or equal to this function? It would be from x equal to one up to, oh shit, what would this be? Is that there? Yes, because you can see it down there, it's gonna be six, seven. So here's two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's, if I would have just drawn this better. Oh, well. so from one to seven, let me stop there for a minute. Is that, I kind of rushed past that, but that's what they mean in that problem. It says graph the absolute value and graph the constant and then see what the answer is visually. So where is this function less than or equal to this function? Right, because after this, after that, and after that, it's bigger. But in between one and seven, it's smaller or equal to. So that's just a, a little taste of solving something graphically instead of algebraically. How do you check yourself? You solve that algebraically. And you should get this answer. Is that, is that? Is, if, if it's not okay, just tell me. We could do another example or... Shouldn't it be in between the two parts of the x minus four absolute value? Shouldn't that part be like, because it has to be with the great less than or equal to three and it has to be that absolute value of x minus four. So it can't be outside of the absolute value of x minus four. Does that make sense? No. Okay. So do you agree with me that this black line is yes. this function? Yes. So where is this black line at most three? That's that's all that's saying. I think yeah. you're trying to put too much into it. I've already graphed this, there it is. So who cares mm -hmm. that it's absolute value? I don't give a shit anymore. I can see the graph. Where is that graph below three? Mm -hmm. From one to seven. And you can tell from the outputs right at one it's equal to three and then up to seven it's going to be below three until it gets back up to three can you does can you ask it again a different way i'm not sure i'm understanding so if you were to shade in like color the area where that graph is possible wouldn't it have to be like if the point is at four and then the two lines come out of it, wouldn't it have to be inside of those two lines? Oh, I see. I'm not shading anything. Okay. Right. This, this is uh, like if that's where the equation would technically have to be. I understand what's happening. I think there are these problems where you have two variables and they have to graph the line and there's an inequality like, like X plus two Y less than six. Yeah. Right. And then that's going to have a line and then you're going to shade one side or the other. Mm -hmm. That's not this because there's only okay. one. Right. Okay. So this is okay. kind of funny. This has only one variable in it, but I've represented it in two dimensions. Now I don't want to make too big of a deal out of that. It doesn't matter. That's why I only have to focus on what X's make this relationship work. 
So that's all that matters is what X values make the black line below the blue line. That's, that's, that's all I need. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Solve things graphically. I sometimes have to go one more dimension than I really need to, but that's not a big deal. I mean, graphing is relatively simple. Well, until you start getting the three, five, 80 dimensions, then it gets a little bit harder. Okay. I got you now. I was just, I guess I, I came in kind of late because my internet wasn't working. And so I was okay. like, not entirely sure what the question was. Oh, I see. I'm with you. I'm with you. So you thought it was more like this kind of a question because they, yeah. I don't blame you. Okay. You're fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anybody else uh, more on that or a different question that you ran into? So if it was an or inequality, like a greater inequality, you would go about it the same way. Just so here's what's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Now watch, watch, watch. All right. I love this question. Oh, all right. What if I were to go back and make this greater than three? Now what would the answer be? Where's the black line above the blue line? Anything less than one and anything above yeah. seven. So from negative infinity up to one or from seven to infinity. And that goes along with what I told you yesterday. A less than is a sandwich. It stays within. And a great tour then is, a, is stay away from me, right? Did I tell you that the, the greater than is like a restraining order? Stay away from me, right? No, okay. Sometimes it's not the best joke because people are like, don't joke about that. I've filed a lot of restraining orders. I understand. Is that all right? You guys are right out there? Yeah. Yeah. So any other questions from one and two? I kind of have one question about that same problem on number 68. It just says uh, to shade the X. Wait, let me read it here. What's it say? It says, observe the points of intersection. And then it says shade the X axis representing the solution set to the inequality. Like what exactly yeah, would that yeah, look so that's, like? That is kind of silly. You ready? So going back to the original thing I did up here, here's where it would be. Oh, <laughs> right. Okay. So that's what I'm doing on this. Remember when you had to do these problems and you had to graph the answer? So yeah. you would do like this and shade. You're kind of doing that on this picture. Yeah. Which is a little silly, but oh well, too bad. But that's all I mean. That might, you're right. I didn't really read that far. And maybe that goes into the other question from earlier. Because the question does mention shading, but it's just shading related to the jelly. I call this the the bread and the jelly. No, that's just for me. That's a, it's a sandwich problem. Okay. Um, just to bring this up again, in case I don't I don't think I said this since everybody was here. Uh, did I? Monday's a quiz, right? Monday's our first quiz. And I have decided that we're going to do it while we're on Zoom at the end of class. So you'll do it, and as soon as you get done, you'll upload it, and then you can leave class. You guys with me? So it's not going to be very long. It's going to be kind of short and to the point. I might later in the semester give longer ones, and then I'll let you turn it in like midnight that same day or something. I've got to be, I'm trying to be more, I have to be careful about people might come to this class and then they work like a 14 hour shift or something. And it's like, shit. <laughs> so I, I figure it might be better to try to get things done during class time because then you should definitely have the time or else what are you doing signing up for the next class? Okay. Any questions about that? What's the quiz on on Monday? Chapter one and two. Chapter one and two, I love it, kick ass. Okay, so we're going to get a little bit into uh, chapter three if there's no more questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me share it. Oh, let me do this first. Huh. There we go. All right, so you guys should see my book now, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, we got a bear, a bull market. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. So functions, the, just the basics of functions. So 
have you guys ever seen pictures like this? That actually looks more like biology or something, microbiology. This looks like yes. the beginnings of evolution or something, right? Yeah. All right. And so the whole idea here is why is this last one just to see what you guys remember, why is that last one not officially a function? That last picture. Because there's two outputs to one input. Yes. So to has anyone just go with me? If you haven't, it's fine. But has anybody ever seen or heard of Highlander, the, the movie, and that there's a TV show? I think I'm old enough to know that one. All right. See, I mean, movies actually. You don't have to be alive when the movie came out. So. so I mean, I know Metropolis. Anybody know Metropolis, black and white? I mean, so, and I wasn't around then. Anyway, there's a very key phrase from Highlander that goes along with the idea of a function. The definition of a function is for every input, there can be only one output. And the fewer people that have ever seen Highlander, the more that is just for me, but I still love that. Um, so, this one is okay. Why, why is this one okay? People often think that that's not a function because Q goes to N and R goes to N. Oh, shit. But of course, every input has its own output, right? Or every input only goes to one output. Let me say it like that. I go to curve. So Q only goes to N, R only goes to N. I like it. Um, so this could be you know, these don't have to be letters. They could be one, two, three, and it could be a function like M could be two and the function is add one. Okay, but they're just trying to be very out there because the function doesn't have to be mathematical. Um, so let me see, here's a good one. So this is not really fully mathematical because part of it, the inputs are words, right? So somebody help me out. Is this a function? Yes. Yes. Now be careful. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. The way they've written it, it seems like these are the inputs and these are the outputs, right? So is price of, now let me say this, is the item a function of the price? Is price a function of the item? So is price a function of the item? Yes. If I say, what's the output for a donut? I get a dollar forty nine. What's the output for a jelly a jelly donut? I get a dollar nine. Is the item a function of the price? So if I say a buck ninety nine, somebody paid a buck ninety nine. Can you tell me exactly what they bought? No. No. And we're ignoring tax for right now. We're in some magical state. Whichever states don't have sales tax and all that kind of stuff. Um, is everybody with me so far? Yes. Has yes. anybody? Does anybody not remember the idea of one-to-one -one functions? It's okay if you don't. And you're all like, I'm not gonna admit. All right, cool. So everybody right now could do that and turn it in and I would grade it, right? If I said, define one-to-one -one function, you could write it down, scan it, send it to me right now. I wouldn't do that, go on. No. <laughs> I appreciate that, there we go. I'm, I'm digging for that honesty. Uh, it's okay if you forgot because what the hell, I don't know if it's been 10 years or whatever, even if it's been two months, we, you could have leaked out the brain. So in order to be a function, every input must have only one output. Is that cool? Yes. Yep. Yeah. For, in order to be a one-to-one -one function, that has to be true and every output can have only one input that it comes from. So obviously, this problem here, does it represent a one-to-one -one function? No. No, because the $1.99 has more than one thing that it would have come from, right? The $1.99 would have come from either of these two kind of donuts. Shit, now I want a donut. Oh, um, all right, moving on. So what about this one? are your grade versus your grade point average, is that a function? So what are you asking yourself? You're asking yourself, does every input grade have an, it, an, an, one output? 
grade point average GPA. Yes. yes. So sometimes people get hung up that there's a whole range of inputs, but each one of those, if I had a seven grade, that's a zero GPA. If I had a 12 grade, that's a zero GPA. So a 12 grade doesn't become zero or 1.5, depending on how I'm feeling. No. But does it work the other way? No. no. If you knew somebody had a 2.0 GPA, you have no idea exactly what their grade was, right? So it doesn't work the other way. It's not a function the other way. How are we doing so far? You guys okay? Yeah. Okay. God, I can't wait to be back in a classroom. I could see people's faces. <laughs> anyway, all right. Uh, so this one, is this a one-to-one -one function where uh, player is the input and rank is the output? Is this a one-to-one -one function? Yes. So this is a, yes. Sorry, Five greatest baseball players. Anybody out there a big baseball fan and, and feel differently about this list? Manny Machado. Oh, there you go. Uh, I was about to say, I don't, I don't care really. It doesn't matter. It's just a, uh, these five would definitely appear in the top 10 for sure. So we'll just say, okay, we're, this is uh, the function for uh, somebody, uh, not for everybody. But is this a one-to-one -one function? If I said Ty Cobb, can you tell exactly what his rank is? Yes. yes. If I say fourth ranked player, player is only lead you to one person. Yes. 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 I love it. Kick ass. Did I remember to turn on? Yes. Think up. Okay. So that would be a one to one function. I love it. Does anyone? So does everybody understand the idea of one-to-one? -one? In fact, the name one-to-one -one is such an awesome name to pick. It makes sense. One-to-one, -one. They, they both go to each other. Oh, they're meant for each other. Does anyone remember what special property a one-to-one -one function allows for? If not, it's okay. We're gonna talk about it later this chapter, but I just wanna see if anybody remembers. Nope. Are you talking about the horizontal line? Ooh, okay. Yes, we're going to talk about vertical line test and horizontal line test, but those are tests to see if their functions are one-to-one -one functions. What special property do one-to-one -one functions have? Does anyone know? All right, I'll give it to you. We're going to talk about it later this chapter. That means that I can find an inverse function for them, which makes sense. So a function is a is a rule so that if i have an input it leads me to an output you with me a one-to-one -one function means that if i put something in it leads me this to what came out if i give myself an output i can lead myself back to the input so there must be some rule that exists to get me back to the input that's why there should be an inverse function an opposite function does that sound semi-familiar to anybody? It's got to be invertible. The function has to be one-to-one. -one. Um, is that for a, like, a little one of X? I can barely hear you. I'm sorry. Let me see. Can I turn you up? Is that for, um, like, F of X, um, like, with a negative one? Yes. Yes. I think I heard the main part of that. So F to the negative one of X which really kind of sucks as a, as a uh, symbol choice because that makes it look like it's supposed to be uh, the reciprocal or something, right? So, so let me write it, uh, let me see, am I sharing? Yes, I am. So just to give you a little taste of what she was just saying. Um, by the way, did I tell you how geeked out I am that I actually own a whiteboard now? Oh, it's good to be easily content. All right. Um, so if I have f of x is x minus 2, for example, what would the inverse function be? So this is the symbol for inverse. You could do this. What's the opposite of subtracting to? Adding to? Yes. Like So yes, that's what you're asking, right? That's the symbol for it. Man, if I look this way, I have no idea where my arm's gonna go. All right. 
Okay, coming back to the book. Let's see. Shabbat. So function notation. It, it, it kind of drives me a little crazy. Uh, let me see. I want to give you some problems to try. Get out of here. Give me some good problems. Go away. Barf. All right, maybe that comes later. Here we go. Perfect. Here. Do you guys see this problem on the screen right now? This uh, x squared plus 3x minus 4, right? Yes. All right. Do those four problems there. I don't know. Maybe I can zoom in. Is there a built-in thing, or what happens if I do this? Ooh. Dude. All right. Take a minute, or, you know, maybe two minutes, and, and do as much of that as you can. so loud. Oh, well. Poor little dude. AC's getting a lot of use. Part A and B have to be easy. Part C, there's a little bit of work you got to do. And then part D is going to be exciting. Bruh. What? Um, okay. I shouldn't have... Okay. All right, guys. I'm going to stop sharing. So, everybody got that at least copied down. Anybody still need that up there? Wait, 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 I still need it. Okay. Sorry, my bad. Just a, just a little hint about if part D is giving you trouble, part D as the answer to part C and the answer to part B in it. All right. You good now, Brian? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna, this will be a real quick trip. I'm gonna put you in the breakout rooms. I just want you to double check your answers with each other and then I'll bring you back and show you what the answers are. Okay. Uh, let me see. I got 37 people. Someday I'll have everybody here. That'd be so nice. Uh, let's do. Sure. All right. So go in there and call me in if you need some help, but I'll just give you a couple minutes. This way I can see who's not here. <laughs> So click on that link that shows up on your screen. And if you don't, I'll have to worry if you are actually here. Let's see, Vanessa, Deja, Jose, Mohammed. Are you guys out there?
That was really fast. What's that? That was really fast. We didn't have to come back yet. You had a full minute to come back. I'm sorry. Normally, I'll, I'll give you more time with some more problems, but I didn't think that would be too, too long. All right, about 15 seconds, everybody will be forced back. All right, here they come, watch out, make some room. Okay, hopefully everybody made it back. Sorry if that was too short. I didn't wanna do too much time. I got cut off. Say again? Oh, I said that I got cut off. <laughs> you got cut off? Oh, yeah, from the breakout room. Sorry, buddy. So, what'd you guys get for the first part? Six. Totally. That's easy, right? And of course, uh, let me put this up on screen. The second part, I think we talked about that before, but that one's not too bad. F of X is X squared plus 3X minus 4. So, of course, F of A is a squared plus 3a minus 4. It's, it's just a dummy. It's what we call a dummy variable. It doesn't really matter what symbol we use to represent the unknown. We just normally use x and y as the primary go-tos. The little bit of extra work you had to do for this one was to actually work this out. Foil, distribute. And then something really, really nifty should have happened for this dude. Right, so here we have, uh, we, you already did this, you already did this, and now you just have to subtract them. And a lot of stuff should have canceled, and then the H should cancel. So did anybody manage to make, get out of there, stop it. Ah! <laughs> did we manage to make it all the way to the bottom? Oh, I thought you were supposed to like put H into F first, like what you did with A. I got you, so let me, let me do this. Let me, let me put some of this up on the board. I'm going to stop sharing. All right, let me put that there for myself. Chabow. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So, um, what was it again, 3x? Oh, shit, Jeff. Minus four. Okay, thank you. So then uh, this one is pretty straightforward. You just replace the letter with the other letter, no big deal. Uh, what I sometimes get for this one is somebody will do this, like this, and then put a plus H at the end. But you have to put this whole thing in, right? So that's where you got to this. And then, now, now, the interesting thing about this guy, what was your question again? Where where is your question come up? No, it's because I plugged in H um, to X also, just like how I did F of A. I did F of H. Oh, you did F of H. Yeah. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, I want you guys to realize something. This might be a really weird question, but I mean, it's not that weird. What did this take the place of? from like basic algebra. Why? Why, I love it. So isn't this, now watch this. When you put uh, A in, you get this, right? F of A. When you put uh, A plus H in, you get F of A plus H. That's amazing, isn't it? It's like X, Y, X, Y. Input, output, input, output. Is everybody semi-decent with that? So what equation is this really? This is just the slope equation. So if I put y2 minus y1, but look at this, what's x2 minus x1? What's a plus h minus a? H. H. This is just a reworking of the slope function, but it works for things that are not linear also. And it's missing a little bit to really become the slope. This would be like, 
the very first thing you start to use in calculus. In calculus is where you learn how to do slopes of any shape, uh, any function. Um, but we're not going to do calculus here because it's in the title of the class. This is all pre-calculus. But this is uh, stuff we can do that will happen in calculus and it'll be interpreted further. Are you guys semi with me? So you yeah. will sing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're with you. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I thought somebody had a question. Uh, okay. I like it. So let's go back. All right. No. There it is. Plop. There. Go. I like it. I like it. Uh, let's see. That's not very interesting. That's not very interesting. I mean, are you guys? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming a little bit here, uh, and, and tell me if I'm wrong. But I feel like I need to assume that everybody can handle just substituting things in. So like this one, substitute a five in, right, for the M, no big deal. What happens here? Don't you have to do completing the square? Uh, maybe. Not really. Uh, okay, you ready? Uh, everybody do this problem. Does everybody... Well, let's see. I don't want to give it away. Uh, I'll tell you what you don't do. You don't put a three in for P because nowhere does it say that P is three. try this out so I don't have to keep going back and forth. So where do I, <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you where to put that three, Jeff. Where do I put that three? And do P squared and plus two. That's right. Let me see if I can make this chunkier. You put this, actually, I didn't even listen to what you said. You put this into where HP, because it's H of P that's three. So I'd rewrite this as, everybody ready? This is going to be exciting. <laughs> Three equals P squared. This is even better than on the board. Plus two P, right? Because they tell me that function equals three. Now you could use uh, completing the square, but you don't need to, right? How do I solve that? Just subtract the three. Yeah, subtract right. the three. Let me put it over here. So then you have to Factor that, and that's easy to factor, right? If I ever lose anybody, please stop me. Don't just sit there and go, oh, well, this is my life. But otherwise, I'm just going to assume everybody's kind of with me. How do you factor this thing? P plus 3, P minus 1. Yeah, P plus three, P minus one, I love it. Oh, just pretend like that's what that says. All right, and then you get your answer, no big deal. So that's the thing about, just be careful about, um, this is, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, be careful about where you put the value in, right? So then you'll get your, uh, I'm not even gonna write it. You get your negative three and your one, beautiful, right? Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. What's neat is if I move this, everything is going to come with me. So I have to erase this. Get in there. Go away. Okay. Same thing there. Um, I like it. Now it gets a little more interesting. Look at this for a minute and try to see what it's, it wants you to do. Don't say anything. This problem right here with the 2n plus 6p. This idea is going to become huge when we get into pre-calculus word problems. Yes, that just sounds awesome. 
give us word problems, Jeff. So basically, can somebody reframe the question in a easier, like, more normal way than they do? What does this mean to do? Solve for n? No. See if it works. No. I like the solve for n. That's almost right. But do you see, I, that would be n as a function of p. That would be n equals stuff with p. It wants p as a function of n. Does everybody see that? So I think that was Amber. Was that Amber who said that? That was Same Emily. One. Emily, okay, I'm sorry. I couldn't keep okay. track of who was speaking. Uh, no what was happening? Oh, if you solve for a variable, you're making it as a function of the other variable. So if it wants me to have P as a function of N, I want to solve for P. So you replace the P with the N? No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Uh, so watch this. Let me stop sharing. Yeah, isolate P. That's right. I saw that. Um, so this is this. This is W as a function of X. You guys see what I'm saying? W as a function of X, where that function of X is 4X minus 7. Right? So if they give me, let me rewrite this down here, 2N plus 6P equals 12. And they want me to write p as a function of n that just means get p by itself because then it's going to equal to a bunch of shit happening to n so another way to look at this the the even more technical way to say this is shit happening to n i really hope somebody's writing that down in their notes that would be awesome but does that make sense i mean maybe you don't want to say that if you're writing some something for the mathematical association of america but um, some shit happens then. So yeah, I'm just going to solve this for P. So I'm going to get subtract two in, divide by six. And what am I going to get? I'm going to get uh, two. I can't think right now. Help me out, everybody. Subtract two in, divide by six. I'm going to get two minus n. Why, why am I having a trouble today? Two minus n over three. There it is. So this would be P as a function of N. Is that right? So we just got to get used. It's like this Wait, is. Still... Where did the three come from? Uh, let me, let me where do this. Where did the three come from? Right. So if I do, uh, if I subtract two N, divide by six. Is that all right? Yeah, so thank you. Divide by six. Yeah, I was just trying to get there quicker because I knew we could all do it. Uh, and then this is P as a function of N. So if I wanted N as a function of P, you would just solve for N. So we will, starting with this class, we are going to use that phrase more. Uh, volume as a function of length. Uh, uh, price as a function of um, cost or whatever, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe so. Maybe so, Jeff. Let me ask you guys, let me ask you guys this. Does anyone know the equation of a circle? Uh, let's say a circle of radius one. Does anyone know the equation for a circle of radius one. Is it a squared plus b squared equals one? Yeah, sure, but let's put it into more rectangular coordinate system terms, right? It'd be x squared plus y squared equals one. Do you guys remember that at all or? Are you guys? You guys okay? So.
real quick, real quick. I'm going to start going on less and less tangents as we get further along. I'm still going to go on a tangent right now. Um, can somebody define a circle for me? I love this question. And you can say, well, it's that thing you just drew, Jeff. No, it's not good enough. What do you mean by define? Yeah, so when I made that picture, I filled those points in, right? I went through a bunch of points. What's the relationship between the points? It's what not a shape. It's a shape where all the points are the same distance from the center. Beautiful, beautiful. So there is some center point, and let's make the center zero, zero, just to make this easy, right? Where every point is the same distance from that center point. All right, we all know this, right? Yeah, Charles, there you go. That would be for a shifted circle if I want to make H and K not zero, kick ass. So what I'm trying to do right now is get to that equation, right? All right. What is this distance? Does you remember the distance formula? Oh shit, oh shit, here we go. That's the radius. Say again, sorry. The radius. It is the radius. It's the name of it. What is this distance given this point and given this point? What is this distance? Let's call it R. Do you guys remember how to figure out that distance? Well, let's do this. Is it pi R square root of? No, you're thinking about square root of. Start say. Square root of um x. It's it's like x squared minus x one, right? Well, not x squared, but it's like x sub two minus x sub one, yeah. And then Plus y, y is sub two, two, y sub two minus y sub one. Squared. All right, and actually, where does it come from? Now watch. So if you plugged in the points, you would get if I call this the second point you would get x minus zero, and then you would get y minus zero. So then x squared plus y squared equals r squared. You can do it, Jeff. There you go, buddy. Now, you could have gotten there a different way. Why is the distance formula what it is? Well, what's this side? This side is x. Is that cool? This side is x. Mm -hmm. This side, of course, is y. And then you got Pythagorean theorem, right? Good old Pythagoras, who stole all of his followers' work. They all did the work for him. Huh? People history of math. Yeah, yeah. Maybe? No? All right, I'm going to mute everybody just to keep my sanity. Okay. Anyway, anyway, so what's my purpose? For this? What's my point? Um, I don't have a point. Are you kidding me? So if I have, so of course, radius one, the equation would be this. Can you give me y as a function of x? Go ahead and try. Try to solve for y. See what happens. Somebody's obscene phone calling me. What's happening? Hear somebody heavy breathing. Is it y equals the square root of one minus x? No. Y equals the square root of one minus x squared. Closer. Y equals x square root of one. Or just y equals x, I guess. Further away. So let's see. Let's try. You ready? So I agree with you. The first thing is to subtract x squared. So then you get y squared equals 1 minus x squared. And then what do you do to both sides? Square root. Square root. When you square root both sides, you better put? Plus or minus. Oh, shit. Ah, shit. <laughs> Almost a jinx there. All right. Now, what really makes me sad, what really makes me sad, especially if I'm teaching like 285, you guys, I could make, no, I'll still be sad if you guys think this. Ain't no way in shit that that's what that is, right? 
right? Right. You can't have a square root distribute across subtraction. They have nothing to do with each other. So no way in hell. Go away. Okay. So is that, does that represent a, a function? No. Let me, good. I like it. Let me ask this a different way. How many functions are sitting there right now? Two. Two. So can I write this as a function of X? No. No. Which makes sense, because what the hell does it look like again? It's a freaking circle. And what test that came up earlier does it not pass? Has multiple outputs um, per input. The vertical line test. Vertical line test, which is a visualization of the definition. For every X, there can be only one Y. So if you draw a vertical line somewhere and it goes through one more than one place, that X has more than one Y. Vertical line test. The volt, right? So we, we knew going in, we should have known going in, that that would be impossible to find a uh, function of X. Because we know going in, it's not a function. How are we doing? What if I do this? What happens to the graph? If I just take the positive root, what happens to the graph? Get a half, circle. Get a half a circle. Half of it's yeah, specifically, the negative part goes away, right? If I do that, is that a function? Yes. Yes, yes. it passes the vertical line test. And you can see it is y is a function of x. If I only allow for the positive outputs of a circle, then it is invertible. So here's a note. Given any function, there might be a way to, to define the domain or the range so that it is invertible. That's going to become very big when we get to trigonometry. Ah. This idea of the function itself might not be invertible, but maybe if I cut off the domain or the range, it might become uh, invertible. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. That's all I want to say on that one, I think. Coming back. All right. I just want to do one more thing, and then I'll let us out a little bit early. Oh, shit, Jeff. I tell you, I tell you, it's like I don't want myself to be able to do something. Now, this one, this one should be quick. Can you guys do this one real quick? That's probably a phrase that brings fear into students' hearts when a teacher says, this will be quick. You're like, dude. Now, now going into this, what does a cubic function look like? That one's kind of hard to say, isn't it? I mean, so we all know what a square function, what uh, even power polynomial functions. They all have that U shape, right? And odd power polynomial functions, uh, they, uh, they all have this, um, what I call, I just call it cubish, where it's like a parabola and the other half fell out because <laughs> it's allowed to go negative, so it doesn't have to turn. Does everybody get that? If it's an odd power, it's allowed to, ha it's allowed to have negative outputs. What's up, Amber? It's doing the disco. Did you say something about the disco? <laughs> you haven't heard that? When, it, like, when it's cubed, it does the disco with one arm up and one arm down. Oh, that's so cool. I like that. It's much better. A, a colleague of mine calls it the giraffe graph. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to assume you guys have all written this down. I like the disco thing because there's that shirt with all the mathematical functions and it's somebody dancing and he's got his arms in all the shapes. So it kind of goes along with that. Um, so I don't know. Has anybody ever taken this one colleague that calls it a giraffe graph? If not, it's okay. But he says it's a giraffe graph because it looks like a giraffe. But I'm like, yeah, if, if it lost a leg, I mean, that's good. Anyway, sorry. 
So I always saw that as kind of uh, morbid. It's the giraffe about to fall over because somebody cut its leg off. Anyway, so let's not call it a giraffe. Um, but but let me, before I erase this poor giraffe, uh, is that invert? I mean, is that a function? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And is that even invertible? Is that let's go further? A vertical line test tells me if it's a function. And a horizontal line test tells me if it's invertible, which kind of makes sense. Vertical line goes for checking x going to only one y. So a horizontal line checks for y going to from only one x. Does everybody get that or remember that? Makes sense. Yes. Kick ass. It does make sense. It really does. Um, so what was I about to do? Oh, yeah, the problem. What was it again? 8 minus y cubed, 8x, right? Is that what it was? X minus 8y cubed. Oh, the 8 was over there. Okay. So it says to write this as a function of x, right? Yes. Yes. I, did, I, I assigned the problem, and then I forgot what it said. So I just have to solve for y. So if I add this over, just to make everything positive to begin with, divide by eight, and then take a cube root. Let me root this over there. Cube root, cube root. A cube root of eight is? Two. Cool. All right. So since it was based on cube, I knew I could solve, because uh, not only is a cubic function a, a function, it's also an invertible function. So I could actually find a function y in terms of x. And of course, if they would have said, find x in terms of y, I would have added and stopped. There it is. Yay. <laughs> so that would have been nice, but that wasn't the problem. Oh, well. All right, cool. Uh, let me see. Was there one more thing I wanted to say? I want to look ahead a little bit. Yeah, so they talk about the vertical line test, horizontal line test. They're finally catching up to us. Okay, book. Okay. A lot of examples. Oh, this is important. Um, here, this is the last thing I'll do. Since I was talking about leaving early, I want to make sure we do that. Second to last thing we'll do. Let me adjust that. Ha ha. So these are all the functions. I mean, these first couple, my God. And then we talked about the absolute value one. That's a shape you gotta know from now on. There's your parabola. There's your parabola that had a rough night. <laughs> this is the new, that, no, anybody know what the real name of this shape is? A rational function. Okay, it, it, it does, this shape, the more generalization is the rational function, but this one specifically, it's called the reciprocal function and you can see why, but does anyone know this shape where, where it's like mirror images of each other across like that? It's kind of, if you do like this, anybody ever heard of a hyperbola? Oh, yeah. So this is actually the most basic hyperbola you could possibly have is the one over x kind of function. I like that. And then of course you got your one over x squared, which I got a shirt that's got Gandalf sitting here and you will, you shall not pass. Because what's happening right here, does anyone know what this is called? The y-axis in this case would be called the what? Does it ever get to the y-axis? No. No. So what is that called? It sounds like I'm going to call you a bad name. It's the ass asymptote. Asymptote, right? Uh, okay. And then there's your radical function, which looks like a, why does it look like a parabola that fell over and it's missing its bottom half? It's because they are almost kind of inverses of each other. All right, and why is a parabola not in invertible by itself? Why is that not invertible? It doesn't pass the horizontal line test. It doesn't pass the whole, exactly. So if I chopped right through zero, 
wouldn't the result be invertible now? Yes. So if I cut the negative side off, I could invert it. And if I inverted it, it would look like this. So they aren't officially inverses, but they are sort of inverses, right? We know that square root and square are basically the opposite, but not technically because you got that negative shit that doesn't really come in. And of course, there's what a, 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 a cube root function looks like in any even, I'm sorry, any odd root function looks like that. Okay, okay. And then looking ahead and then I'll let you guys out. We get into domain and range, which I didn't talk about specifically, but please just try to get ahead into chapter three a little bit. I know, I know some of you guys are still doing um, one and two, which is fine, but this should really be a review, uh, domain and range kind of stuff. Should be a review. Um, so chapter three is almost what I would consider a review chapter, but I thought it was a good place to first start slowing down a little bit. Um, okay. I feel like it's pretty good. What do you guys think? Is that a good place to stop? You're like, you could have yeah. stopped about 50 minutes ago, Jeff. It would have been fine. Aw. All right. If you're upset about not getting all the, all that you paid for, then, uh, keep it to yourself. And I'll see you on Monday. If you have any questions, especially get chapter one and chapter two done. If you get them turned in this week, I'll get them looked at and you could use it to study for the quiz, right? So work on that for sure, but you also want to get into chapter three now so you're not getting behind. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can just shoot me an email or shoot me a message on Canvas, either way. Okay. And do me a favor, if I don't get back to you, don't just assume I'm being an asshole because my spam thing is often on uh, militant and it's uh, filtering. I've noticed emails from students going there that I didn't have go there before. So it's a little frustrating and I can only check it like once a day. So don't give up on me. Just, uh... all right, all right. Otherwise we're done. You can hang out if you have other questions. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I do. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Um, hi. <laughs> Can you help me with number 78 on 3.1? Yes. Uh, I have no idea what it's asking. Uh, let's see. 3 1. 70. Oh, all right. So this is the next thing we're going to do on Monday. I, I should have oh, okay. knew I was going to forget to proclaim something, but I'll send an email out because I need people to remember to, to realize they need a graphing calculator starting next week. So these problems, this problem specifically is about changing the window on your graphing calculator. Oh. Ew. So, um, yeah. So that's why it's in the technology section, right? Okay. It wants you to put y equals x squared in the calculator, but then uh, given this viewing window from negative 100 to 100, what would the range have to be? What would the output window have to be so that you can see all the outputs given that, that input range? Okay. I don't, I don't have my calculator yet. <laughs> okay. But, so hopefully you get one soon. Uh, yeah. Some, well, okay, so I actually had one and then I lent it to somebody last, a couple semesters ago and she's actually in this class and she goes, oh, I'll give it back to you. So I'm getting it back, hopefully, fingers crossed on Saturday. Okay. So, <laughs> that's what, so starting yeah. Monday, we'll have probably at least one part of every class will be looking at uh, graphing calculator stuff. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. How's everybody else? You guys actually, I know Brian, Brian, you're there. Anybody else have questions? Oh, just a comment. <clears throat> I turned in my practice scan, so whenever you can grade that. Oh, that way I can... let me see. That way I can access the chapters. 
Oh, there, I see it. All right, I'll do it right now. Awesome. Thank you very much. Sure. All right, let me see. Faith, then Nathaniel. I'm lost on that first problem that you did with, like, the letters and stuff. I was, like, completely lost. The one with the F of X and then they had F of A? Yeah, I think, yeah. Right, okay. So... Let's see, if f of x is the square root of x minus 7, right? What is f of 8 for, first off? Wouldn't it, it would be, so you do 8 minus 7? Yeah, so you take whatever's in here and you put it in place of the x, right? Yeah. So what is f of w? W minus 7. Square root, yeah. That's all, right? So what would F of uh, B minus C? It would be square root of B minus C and then minus 7. Yep. That's it. So whatever's, whatever's here goes in place of X. Okay. Yep. Cool. Okay, and I also have a question. I turned in my review and I got it back and you just put like a bunch of dots and okay at the end. Oh, okay. So review your mistakes. You are right on the edge of me saying correct. Yeah. So you don't have to correct anything, but you should go through and look at any mistakes you made. But would it be better if I corrected them? You could for yourself. Sure. You could just right. ask me if it's good, but uh, there's like, I think you should be able to you should be able to tell what the mistakes were, but if you can't, then just let me know. Yeah, and for some of the problems, I had work on them, and then you just, like, put an arrow and you, like, question mark work. But the work was, like, at the bottom, like, under the problem. So I was, like, oh, I didn't go seek work, my favorite. Wait a minute, let me see. Who is this, Nathaniel? Let me see. Yeah. And we're talking about the, uh, which, which assignment? Uh, chapter one review. Um, that might have been my biggest concern. So number six, you should be able to see what the mistake was. Yeah. Uh, and then I think it's probably the factoring, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I looked at it and I saw that I did it wrong and I fixed it. But like number 48, I just need to see what it is you were, what your thought process is on that kind of problem. Um, same thing with number 66. Well, like my work was at the bottom. I just rewrote the question or the problem. And then on the right side, I just flipped it, flipped the um, like fraction. And then yeah, I- the step I, to yeah. go from the polynomial to the factored form requires some work. You can't just stare at it and know you must have thought something. There must be some work you could show me. Okay. Yes. So in the future, you got to be careful. I'm going to start making you correct it if you don't show me enough work. Okay, so it's fine. I don't have to like do anything with it. This time, no. I, it looked like the rest of it was okay, and you know, I'm just. So my main thing there was just be careful. Show more work in the future. Okay, yeah. and um, on your modules, there was like the warm up tab and like the factoring methods, and I emailed you asking where I would have to turn that in. And I don't see any like, um, like assignment link or anything to like. Yeah, no, those are not assignments. Okay, okay. Those cool. were just extra things, just in case you need them. If you forgot how to factor, if you forgot how to solve quadratic equations, and then of course there's a survey that's just I want you to fill it out. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Bye. See you. Uh, Donai, are you there? Are you there? Or are you just logged in and left? Okay, I'm gonna leave.